right, so hi, David. Thank you so much for being here today. And I'm really looking forward to uh, gaining more insight on your experience and perspective of working out of ESO. Um, before we go into the questions, it would be great if you could um, take a moment to introduce yourself and your position here out of ESO. Hi, Kimberly, thank you very much. I'm David Watson. I'm based in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Uh, work from home is not new to me. I've been doing this for, uh, I don't know, like 10, 15 years. Um, but I'm uh, responsible for sales, um, VP of Enterprise Sales. Awesome. Great introduction. Uh, to follow up with that, what prompted you to join Aviso? Well, I've known our fearless leader, Trevor, for almost 15 years. Um, we worked together a long, long time ago at uh, Oracle covering Hewlett Packard. And then um, a few years later, Trevor went over to Salesforce and I joined him there and worked for him covering uh, Dell, BMC, and a couple of other enterprise accounts. And then um, when he went to TACT as the CRO, I uh, joined him there and worked there for a few years. And uh, when he came over here as CEO about a year and a half ago, I uh, joined him over here. Awesome. Cool. And what does a typical workday look like for you? A typical workday? Um... Uh, I usually get up around six, have coffee, grab my iPad and go through Moxtra um, and make sure I'm just in sync with our global virtual team, uh, covering any open action items, open to do's. Typically then I will uh, check email and uh, respond to any things going on with email. And then um, usually I have, you know, one, two or three customer demos or meetings throughout the day. So prepare for that. And then um, in any open white space time, prospecting, you know, uh, trying to get in front of new clients, new customers, schedule meetings. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And do you have any highlights of working out of ESO that you want to share or uh, maybe some of your greatest accomplishments that you've had since working here? Um, in my work history, I mean, I've spent probably three quarters of my time at large, very large companies like a Sun Microsystems, like an Oracle, like a Salesforce. And there's certain great things about that. But the fun thing about a startup is uh, being able to put your thumbprint on an organization that, um, you know, there's not a lot of process. There's not a lot of bureaucracy. If something needs to get done, uh, you can just get in there and do it and create that process, uh, do whatever needs to be done. Uh, in order to get your job done. So I love the the nimbleness of it. I love being able to make my mark on the organization. Right. I think um, from an undergraduate student perspective, working at a, a startup, definitely um, one of my favorite things is seeing how my work is directly impacting the company. Um, so I definitely agree with those points that you touched on. Um, so moving along here, I'd love to talk about how rem remote work has been like for you and um, kind of how you keep yourself productive throughout the day. Well, I've been working, I haven't gone into an office for probably 15 years. So, you know, working from home um, remotely, I did that at, at um, I did it at Salesforce and have done that since then. So I guess the weird part is usually I'm on the road in front of clients two or three days a week. So it's just kind of weird not to, not to be in a road, not to be on the road, not to be in an airplane, not to be in a hotel, not to be across the desk from a client. So um, the remote part, you know, I, I'm used to that. It's just learning how to, learning how to um, everything you do now is a, you know, a virtual online meeting. So it just, you know, it gets fatiguing. It's harder, I think, um, you know, without being able to look someone in the eyeballs to see if your message is resonating. Right, like right now you have to juggle your content with looking at the camera and, you know, seeing if they're connecting. Right. Um, but I think we've all, you know, we're all learning to adapt to that. And I think that's, uh, I think, I don't think we'll ever go back to the way it was. Right, I agree, which is sad, but. <laughs> It's a harsh reality. <laughs> uh, those are great points that you mentioned, though. Thank you. Um, and with COVID, we've also seen a huge shift to virtual selling, as you know. Um, what are you hearing from prospects and customers in particular about this transformation? I think for sales leaders who are used to a lot of contact, maybe in office, uh, with their team, it's been really challenging. What are, what are my people doing? You know, what, what are they actually doing? 
Um, are they working? Are they talking to people? So for those sales leaders who maybe had an inside sales team or just a sales pit um, where they were comfortable just walking around and seeing people on the phone or emailing today, they're kind of wondering. So I think that's why our technology really adds value and benefit in being able to auto capture the seller's exhaust of email and meetings, um, automatically capturing that, populating the CRM, feeding our AI, and then at a deal level, giving that sales leader visibility into what is my team actually doing? I can see the number of meetings that are, that are, that are going on. I can see the emails that are going out. Um, so I think that message uh, in our product is really resonating. Yeah, definitely. Um, to change the gears a little bit with this, uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts and perspective on guided selling. Well, like it or not, AI is um, affecting any and all parts of our lives and, and our worlds. Um, there's, there's a couple of great books. Um, one's called uh, Sapiens and one's called Homo Deus that really talk about the history of mankind and how technology is, is impacting our lives and our world. And one area that, that you know, we're trying to, that we are pioneering is, is really around using technology, using AI, using machine learning, using all the data and the exhaust of the sales process to help sellers with insights. Where do you have risk in your committed pipeline? Um, you know, how can you avoid a deal that you've thought and you felt was really good, but that last week of the, the quarter or the month it slips and you're like, oh, I don't know what happened. You know, we're using AI to help a sales team understand early in the deal cycle where they have that risk and then what can they do to mitigate that risk. And then secondarily, what deals have the highest statistical probability of closing? So as a seller, the limited amount of hours in the day, I'm spending my time on the right deals. So I'm selling more, closing more, making more money for myself and for my company. Awesome. Yeah, I think I've been delving into the path plan feature, which I think has been really helpful um, in mitigating risk during un unpredictable times, um, not only during COVID, but also looking past that as well. Um, so yeah, that's great insight. Uh, this is the last question that I have for you today. Um, I'm curious what thoughts you have on Aviso's new product features, or if there are any particular features that you're most excited about bringing to the market. Um, I think one of the most annoying things that all sales reps hate is uh, you're on a call with a client, you're in a dialogue with them, and it's just, I'm not a good note taker, never have been a good note taker. Right. And so the idea of being able to record um, a virtual call, having technology, listen in on that call, transcribe it, uh, record it, then transcribe it, and then apply sentiment analysis, NLP to it. Um, I mean, selfishly, that adds a lot of value for me that I can really focus on my clients and listening and being active and engaged with them as opposed to worrying that I'm capturing everything. So I think that's a, a great feature of the product. And I think our clients um, are embracing that. And then the voice assistant, I think is another um, great tool instead of having to um, hunt or type search, you know, what if you had a, a virtual digital assistant where you could just ask questions about, your underlying sales data and for it to go fetch that information for you. I think there's great value in that selfishly for me as well as our clients. Right. I totally agree with that. Um, prior to coming to Aviso, I had, I had not heard about this type of uh, AI technology. So um, it's definitely been something that's been intriguing me to look more into. Mm -hmm.